Hello everyone, I am Pavish Babadi from the University of Technology, Mauritius. And today, on behalf of my co-authors and my colleagues, I will be presenting to you our research work entitled Identifying Human Emotions from Facial Expressions with Deep Learning. So before we get started, I would like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity to present our research work at the Zinc 2020 conference. So to start off, I would like to talk about our area of research. In our research, we attempted to undertake the process of facial emotion analysis while providing a reference to three datasets and tools to both construct a model using neural networks and use said model to hopefully identify the human emotions accurately from a given image file. Our human vision can detect any of these emotions almost impeccably as the average human can accurately guess up to around 150 fps. But face-to-face -face communication is a real-time process that requires fast thinking to simultaneously detect these emotions and process them, something that our minds are not always capable of. So, this is why we have tended to make a human-to-machine communication system which is able to identify, interpret and process these human emotions accurately in reference to the facial action coding system, which we'll get to in a few minutes. The problem, the problem description that we faced in our literature review was the unavailability of similar open source emotion classifiers. And we found out that 93% of human communications uh, includes non-verbal communications. So when you think about it, this is actually a huge chunk of uh, information that we uh, attribute to uh, non-verbal communications like facial cues or gestures. So the aim of our research was, like I mentioned, to develop an API using existing tools such as the artificial neural network to train and test the model with reasonable accuracy to identify the seven emotions by the FACS system. The FACS system is a guide written by Dr. Paul Ackman uh, which uh, indicates that there are seven main emotions for humans, which is which are happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, disgust, fear, and neutrality. So these are the seven emotions that we are basing ourselves on and the, the preferred outcome of our system. So we tried to implement a system which is capable of predicting or outputting one of these seven emotions. <coughs> so, for the technology used, we uh, made the best out of uh, freely available tools and frameworks to, to uh, create our system, namely a three layered convolutional neural network that uh, we wrote using Python. And for the facial detection, which is part of our, of our pre processing, we used the BioLagions algorithm, again written in Python and which is a freeware. And for the processing, we use a combination of Keras and TensorFlow to train and test our system. <clears throat> so let's talk a bit about neural networks. Neural networks are at their core made up of various layers which are in turn made up of various neurons. The basic idea of any neural network is to mirror the synapses in our human minds. Unlike traditional uh, concepts, a neural network can learn to recognize patterns, make decisions, and most importantly for us, to make predictions without being programmed explicitly. Similar to our human minds, a well-constructed neural network can learn independently. 
A typical neural network ranges from a few dozens to hundreds, thousands, or even millions of artificial neurons arranged sequentially in a series of layers, each of which connects to the layers on either side. So, for our hardware configuration, we used uh, two uh, different sets of hardware. It was not necessary, but for the training part and the testing part, we uh, could have used the same model for the training part, but the testing part. But as uh, you can see on the screen, the training part, we actually required a very highly uh, powerful computer equipped with a Intel Core i7 3.8 GHz and with a uh, GPU of NVIDIA GeForce 1050 Ti. So the reason for this is when you're training a model, it actually takes up a lot of comput computational power. So that's why we used a very powerful system to train our model. But for the testing part, we were able to use a very standard laptop config to run the system. Because once we train the system, we don't need to run the uh, computational part again. Because once we train our system, we do not actually need that much computational power to consume our model. So we were able to uh, run the system on a very basic laptop uh, with a Core i3 uh, configuration. So we'll talk a bit more on this in our uh, results part. So for our proper system, uh, it's actually very simple if you know where to look. Uh, I'd like to turn your attention to uh, the model which is in the center of the diagram uh, on the screen. So there are two flows here. The first being the data set which, which flows in the model, which in turn, give, which in turn gives out the prediction uh, based on the seven emotions in the FACS. And the second flow is an image that goes through a preprocessor and the output goes into the model to uh, give us our prediction. So the reason for this is, firstly, we have to train uh, our model on the data set. So this is the first part where we consume uh, the model using the data set to get a prediction. This is where the training part uh, is actually taking place. And the second part is where we consume the model. So we just take any random image after our model is trained and we put it through the, the model, it should give us a, an accurate prediction. So the distinction here is the data set is uh, data which is uh, labelized. So that's how the, the model actually learns about the, the several emotions and, and etc. We'll get into that in our in the next slide. And the second part is where we take an image which has no actual labels and just put it through the model and uh, we get a prediction. So let's see about our data set. For the data set, we use the first 2013 uh, data set, which was available freely online and provided uh, the reference below. So the data set is actually very simple. There are three distinct columns, the first being the emotions, where 0 to, se zero to 6 uh, sorry, represents each of the different emotions, and the second column, the pixel, is actually uh, each image, each labelized image, stored in a binary format, and the third is the training, uh, the usage. So, in this data set, we had around, roughly around uh, 31,000 images, or lines, uh, depending on how we interpret this, and we use the standard config of 80, 20 uh, to train our model, where 80% was used for training and 20% was used for testing. So the way the training works is we are taking, let's say, a thousand images of people expressing the happy emotions in a binary format, of course. And we're saying, okay, but this is a label, this is a happy image. And we're giving it to the model over and over again until the model actually learns 
actually start to uh, understand that okay so this is an happy image so it will break down the image and try to create links to why this image is happy like for all of the happy images that we have and it will try to let's say draw certain links to them so we'll do this again and again until the model actually reach a state where it can take any picture without any labels and uh, say okay analyze the picture and say okay this is a happy emotions based on the rules created during the training set so for our accuracy of the training of a system for nearly 40 hours over 256 epochs we achieved a very reasonable accuracy of 79.8 percent so this was for us a very good figure you know, for a foundation of our system uh, in a very simplest term what it meant was we were able to accurately uh, predict the emotions of 8 out of 10 images so we'll take a look at one of the um, tests so as you can see on the screen there are two different screen caps for two tests which were images that were not part of our training data so as you can see the first one on the left the person is visibly angry and the system was able to to detect that emotion per, let's not say perfectly but very accurately it's called a high score on the anger and the one on the right a uh, person is happy and that was the emotion that is being displayed on the graph with the bar chart representing the happy emotion but as you can see there are also small amounts of other emotions being displayed in both pictures in both tests where the system is uh, displaying that there could be a small prediction a small percentage of other emotions as well and this is due to the fact that uh, the system is not 100 uh, percent the accuracy is still not uh, perfect as you might say 79.8 percent uh, so there will be still a small margin for error and this is what the limitations of our system is with a 20.2 percent margin of error and the fact that the system currently only works on images containing one single human face when we run the test on a picture containing two or more images the system uh, return a, a, a falsifies data on some occasions and on other occasions it ignored the subsequent faces and only run the test on the first face it could find and one of the limitations of this system is for now it is all local based we are still working on a web interface to consume the training model and the testing model so you know that we are trying to implement a system where we could host the model on a, on a server and then use a web interface to uh, relay information back and forth so you can say uh, we could upload a picture from a web browser and then the this picture will be sent to the server to process it and return the value that is returned that is uh, predicted questions from tcp the first one being some pointers to possible C use cases. So this is something that we actually uh, discussed during the conception of our system. Uh, it could be a stepping stone for other people to work on this. Uh, the idea is uh, to integrate the system to virtual home assistants like uh, Alexa or Siri, where we could, uh, based on the uh, output of the system, uh, filter content so one example might be uh, on a personal basis when I get home every day after work I talk to my Alexa and I uh, tell her to play a, a music playlist and this could be this could be um, let's say optimized to 
where we have an IoT camera on the on my desktop, and when I walk in, the camera takes a picture and sends it to the server, where it uh, computes the possible prediction of what I'm feeling out and then uh, relay that information back to the assistant and then the assistant depending on how I'm feeling uh, chooses from a preset uh, playlist or movie content or even mood lighting using uh, IoT bulbs and everything so this is something that we actually uh, worked on on a consumer facing there are also some other applications where we talked about virtual uh, interview robots or even uh, crowd control uh, sourcing where we could identify large clusters of let's say uh, negative emotions which could help in right controls and in some countries and for the second question, the computational requirement, this is something that I touched on on the requirement slides where we saw two different sets of uh, systems. The first being a very high powerful uh, computer to train the model. This is the case only for the training of a model. Once we have the model trained, we can store it somewhere and consume that with a fairly basic laptop, just like we did in our research. I hope that I was able to answer both questions and uh, you guys were able to understand our idea and approach behind this research. If you have any questions, uh, my email is on the screen. Feel free to get in touch with me or any of my co-authors. We would love some feedback or any input that you might have. On behalf of my co-authors i would also like to thank the committee of the zinc 2020 for giving us this opportunity to present our work and that will be all thank you stay safe